A child born in Britain today should have the opportunity to become anything they want to. An Olympian. A scientist. A firefighter. The Prime Minister. The Head of State. Unfortunately, no person, no matter how intelligent and talented, can ever become the head of state, a position given to a royal as a birthright. The British public is deferent to a monarch that we have not elected and may never have the chance to become. The monarch is born superior to us all and we are subjects, not citizens. The Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development says Britain has the worst social mobility in the Western world. But the royals are value for money. The official reported cost to the British public is around 40 million per year. Add on to that the 24-hour security, plus the cost of hosting the royals. And according to the lobby group Republic, we can estimate the real figure to be closer to 202.4 million. That's the approximate cost of over 9,000 nurses 8,000 policemen, or one monarch to open business parks. The royal wedding alone was a £7 million security operation paid for entirely out of the existing police budgets. But the royals create public income from the duchies of Cornwall, Lancaster and the Crown Estate. True. The royal property portfolio is worth over £7 billion and includes key urban developments, historical buildings, much of the UK's farmland, seabed and coastline. This includes all whales and dolphins. This portfolio earns the state an estimated £230 million a year. But how did the royal family come to own this land? And why isn't it the property of the public? Why is this land exempt from inheritance tax, unlike the land belonging to us commoners? In return for a small profit, we forfeit our right to aspire by valuing inherent privilege over actual talent. But the monarch has no real power. Then why have one? Why have a dated, undemocratic system that favours bloodline over ability? What about the power to appoint a Prime Minister? To dissolve Parliament? And the Royal Assent, in which a monarch formally approves the Acts of Parliament, passing them into law. The monarch will never use these powers. If they did, there will be a revolution. Then why give an unelected head of state powers absolutely vital to our democracy, on the basis that they are never used under any circumstance. Did you know the royals currently enjoy protection from the Freedom of Information Act and have the ability to lobby the government on political issues? What about the good work the royals do for the country? Nurses, school teachers, scientists and care workers do good work for the country. But the monarchy is good for tourism. People come to visit the historical castles and palaces, not to have tea with a monarch. Take Buckingham Palace. It is closed to the public for most of the year, and when open, visitors can only see a fraction of the grounds. Compare this to the Louvre in Paris, formerly the palace of the French royal family, and now one of the world's leading museums attracting 8.5 million tourists per year. Buckingham Palace attracts 0.4 million. Logic suggests that opening the whole of Buckingham Palace and its gardens all year round would increase tourism. But the Louvre does have some of the world's greatest masterpieces. So does the royal family, earning one of the largest art collections in the world with pieces by Rembrandt, Rubens, Raphael and Titian at an estimated value of £10 billion. If only we had a big empty building in the capital to display and maintain them.